Welcome to the short examination video on peripheral neurological examination of the lower limb for revision. The objectives of this video are for you to be able to competently perform a neurological examination of the lower limb, to be able to communicate clearly with patients what it is you would like them to do, to understand how to elicit neurological signs from your patient, to gain fluency in the examination skill, and to understand why students fail this station. Some common reasons why students fail this examination is because they lack fluency. Sometimes they have poor technique, they fail to elicit signs from the patients, they give poor or bizarre differentials, or they run out of time. On entering an examination station, present your library card to the examiner and then begin. Introduce yourself to the patient with your full name and title and confirm that you have the correct patient by checking their name and date of birth. Ask how they'd like to be addressed and then explain briefly that you'd like to perform an examination of their lower limbs and what this will involve, gain their consent for the procedure and then ask them to undress from the waist down to their underwear so that your patient's adequately exposed. As with any examination, begin with general inspection, looking around the bed area for things like walking aids and glancing at your patient, how well do they look? Are there any abnormal movements? What's their balance like while sitting? If you've not already done so, make sure you wash your hands before beginning the examination. What I'd like to do is I'd like to see you walking if that's okay. Ask the patient to walk with a walking aid if needed and then turn through 180 degrees in return. Note the time taken, the length of stride, arm swing, steadiness, limping or other difficulties. Ask the patient to walk heel to toe in a straight line. This emphasises any gait instability. The Ask the patient to close their eyes. Repeatedly falling is a positive result and indicates sensory ataxia due to appropriate receptive deficit. That's fine, you can open your eyes back out if you'd like to have a seat. Look for deformities, muscle wasting, hypertrophy, fasciculation, myclonic jerks, tremor and asymmetry. Before assessing tone, make sure the patient doesn't have any pain in their leg. Tone is the resistance felt by the examiner when moving the joint passively through its range of movement. Ask them to relax and go floppy. Begin by rolling or rotating the leg from side to side and then briskly lift the knee into the flex position to assess the tone. Clonus is a rhythmic series of contractions elicited by sudden stretch of the muscles. To test for ankle clonus, support the patient's leg with both the knee and the ankle resting in 90 degrees flexion, then briskly dorsiflex and partly avert the foot, sustaining the pressure. Test the patient's limb power and note the results using the Medical Research Council's scale for muscle power. Remember that strength varies with age, occupation and exercise. Test the hip for flexion and extension. The knee, the flexion and extension. It's against my hand, lovely. And the same with this left, you can bend your knee for me. Don't let me pull your leg away. And if you push out against my hand, excellent. This time, if you push the ankle out my hand, for dorsiflexion and, and plant affection. Excellent. Same here, push down against my hand and curl your toes up. Grand. Just going to do it with a big toe. So and for completion, my fingers, you can also test the greater toe. Head. And the same again, push down and up towards your head. To test the reflexes, make sure the patient is as relaxed as possible. Flex your wrists and use the weight of the hammer to determine the strength of the blow. Make sure you strike the tendon, not the muscle. Compare one side to the other. If the reflex appears abstinent, then use a manoeuvre of interlocking fingers and pulling against each other immediately before striking the tendon to reinforce the limb reflexes. Record the reflexes as increased or hyperactive, normal, diminished, absent, or only with reinforcement present. To test the plantar response, run a blunt object along the lateral border of the foot towards the little toe. 
abnormal responses for the greater toe and others to flex, and abnormal plantar responses extension of the large toe, which is known as the Babinski response. What I'd like to do is just to check coordination. So I'd ask you to take your right heel. With the patient supine on the examination couch, ask them to run the heel of one leg down the shin of the other, lift off and then repeat. Then perform it with the opposite leg. It's abnormal if the heel wavers from the shin line. Left heel, top of your right shin, run it down. And just do that for a couple of times for me. Great, you can relax there. Next we're going to test the sensation in your legs. Begin by testing the dermatones of a light touch. Explain to the patient that you're going to touch their legs with a piece of cotton wool and you want them to respond with a yes to each touch. Ask the patient to close their eyes and then dab, rather than stroke, the cotton wool in a dermatomal pattern. If the patient does not respond to a touch, then map out the area to find whether it's a peripheral neuropathy, usually impaired sensation in a stocking shape, or a dermatomal sensory loss. Next, check for a loss of sensation to superficial pain. Explain to the patient that you're now going to repeat the process with a sharp object then ask them to close their eyes before testing the dermatomes again. Ask the patient to respond with a blunt or a sharp depending on what sensation they feel. As before, map out any area of sensory loss. Remember, a neuro tip is a sharp and should be disposed of accordingly. This time, Check the vibration. Place a vibrating 128 hertz tuning fork over the sternum. Ask the patient, do you feel it buzzing? Next, ask the patient to close their eyes and place the vibrating fork on the tip of the greater toe. Ask them whether they can feel it. Assume that they can. Ask them to tell you when the vibration stops and then pinch the tuning fork to stop it vibrating. So if you keep your eyes closed, just tell me when you feel it stopping. If sensation appears impaired, then place the fork on the interphalangeal joint and progress proximally through the medial malleolus, tibial tuberosity and anterior iliac spine, depending on the response of your patient. So lastly, I'm going to check for feeling in the... With the patient's eyes open, demonstrate this procedure. Hold the patient's greater toe at the sides of the distal phalanx to avoid this patient sensing the pressure movement. Tell the patient, this is up and this is down. Now ask the patient to close their eyes and to tell you which way you have moved their toe. Repeat the movement randomly several times. If there is an impairment, then proceed to testing more proximal joints, such as the ankle. The examination is now over, so thank the patient and invite them to dress. Turn to the examiner, present your findings and explain that you'd also take a full history, perform an upper limb examination and you would do further tests depending on the findings. There are far too many possible investigations to list here, but for example if the patient had a peripheral neuropathy you may want to test blood and urine for glucose, perform B12 levels, perform liver function tests, measure their urea and creatinine, measure their rheumatoid factor perform a drug screen and perform nerve conduction studies. Always avoid listing every test and examination note to medicine and think clearly and carefully what your likely differentials are and how to test for them. Thank you for listening and we hope you found this video useful.